Hey there, nation, and welcome to the show where we help you pl play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back with another episode of Into Darkness, our series dedicated to Snarling Batter Studios, Space Station Zero Battle Reports, and this is a solo play campaign that features my ca my crew, which is a shipping crew from the Skyfarer. It is a five-man crew of shipping employees who are trying to make their way through the depths of Space Station Zero. So I just got done doing our very first challenge, which is our docking access port challenge. So I'm moving on to my second challenge. This challenge is a repair bay challenge. So I actually rolled up on my random challenge table to see where I was going to go to after my very first adventure. And so now we are on the repair bay. So that being said, real quick, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about the scenario and the scenario rules real quick, as well as talk about our roster. So we will come back here in a second and get this battle report started. Challenge number three, the repair bay. Your crew finds themselves in a mostly empty bay, although you spot ancient disused tools and perhaps engine parts scattered about. The largest feature of the room is a large alien engine that sits in the center, a forgotten repair project from a bygone age. As you move into the room, ships begin to appear in the dim emergency lighting, strange creatures crawling forward, distended jaws opening. So for this one, this is Repair Bay, challenge number three, and this one is actually pretty interesting. There's two objectives I need to accomplish in this scenario. The first one I need to do, of course, is to defeat the starving mutants. These hunched figures are twisted and gnarled, though they still in a slight gleam of intelligence in their eyes. You shouldn't think of how long they've been here, or worse, where they came from. Now the starving mutant does have a life of three, a movement of five, through a five. They also have combat score of three, a reaction of two, and intelligence of one. And the starving mutants are armed with sharp teeth and wicked claws, which gives them a close range weapon with plus one to their combat score. And they have a special ability. If the starving mutant deals three or more damage with a combat challenge test attack, they regain one life. Now, at the start of the second turn as well, we also have the fission reactor, which is alien tech. And this is our secondary objective. It says this obstacle is not activated until the start of the second turn. At the start of the second turn, place the objective on the map in the position indicated. The combat in the room has damaged the ancient fusion reactor, not only restarting it, but causing a cascade within it that will lead to a meltdown and destroy everything in this room and beyond. Disturbing the fusion reactor is a intelligence challenge test of five with an A plus result that may be attempted by any crew member within one inch of the objective. If this challenge test is not completed by the end of the fourth turn of the game, it explodes and all crew members are instantly out of action and removed from play. Roll as normal on the injuries table and death table, re-rolling any rolls of 12+. plus. Anyone who survives has done so by a miracle and may continue their exploration of Space Station Zero as normal. Now, for the rewards in this one, it reads, This bay has many old sets of tools and engine parts. Even though much of the gear is damaged or deteriorated beyond repair, some of it is in shockingly good condition. This room contains a mini lab kit and a hyper scanner and that pretty much makes up the scenario rules for this one all right so here we are at the repair bay so right over here on the left hand side we have two starving mutants represented by these uh, skaven warriors here as well as two more starving mutants over here in the top of the upper right hand corner meanwhile my starting area for my deployment zone i got the crew of uh, the skyfarer which is my shipping crew over here in the back we have bjorgen thunderick that is my commander Right next to him, of course, we have Deadeye Lun taking point. That's my medical officer over there. On the back side, that is Enric Ironhell as well. Now, Bjorgen Thundrick is passing a missile weapon, energy missile weapon with jump boots. He's also got Armored Force 6 for his edge. At the same time, I got an um, energy whistle weapon for Deadeye Lund as well. He's got a meta bag. And then right behind him is Enric Ironhell. That guy's also got a heavy, uh, what you call it, heavy kinetic energy based uh, kinetic weapon. That's what he has back there. And over here on this side, of course, I have a Kazgan Drax skewer. That is my uh, soldier. He's got a heavy melee weapon with a point-to-point -point teleporter. And right there, we have Garrett Allen's and my pilot. He's got an energy missile weapon as well as a hyperscanner as well. So what I have to do in this scenario is do a couple of things. First of all, I have to wipe out the t two sets of starving mutants at the same time. Wait for the energy fusion reaction reactor to pop up, which I have to repair and pass that challenge, or else I'm dead by the end of round number four. So we'll see exactly what happens with this one. So that being said, we go directly to the top of turn number one. I get priority, so let's get this going. All right, so that takes directly to the end of turn number one. As you can see, quite a bit has actually happened during this activation, and I totally own on this one as well. 
what is all kinds of awesome. So the first thing I do, of course, is I activate uh, Bjorgen Thundrick. Bjorgen Thundrick actually moves up his normal mood allowance forward, it opens fire directly into one of the starving mutants over here. Managed to take that guy out with my first blast of weapons, which is absolutely fantastic. Rode two twelves. So that was the actual reason why I was able to take that guy out so quickly. So that part was amazing. At the same time, I was able to steal the activation by rolling a seven, uh, six up, and by rolling a seven on my D12. So I activated Garrett Allenson next. Garrett Allenson moved up his normal moon allowance, opened fire directly onto this starving mutant. Was able to put a one wound on him with my energy missile weapon uh, before I was able to get done. And then I rolled one more time to steal activation, rolled an 11. So because I then activated my Dead Eye Lun, which is my medical officer, he moved up his normal moon allowance as well and open fire match with two wounds directly onto this starving mutant as well. Now for the rest of the activations, of course, the starving movements, movement mutants started moving up 40s in their command, uh, their AI. First off, one of those alien, uh, one of the starving mutants actually moved up as quickly as he can, doing uh, double sets of movements directly behind here, heading directly towards uh, Bjorg and Thunderick. Unfortunately for him though, he wasn't able to gauge in close combat to hit him with close combat. So for my next activation, I activated Enric Ironhell, uh, my engineer. He'd used his weapon tuning ability in order to power up his Kinetic heavy weapon opened fire directly onto this guy as well, killing him without any problems. And then, of course, the next starving unit actually moved up from here as well, trying to get to Gowrod Allison. Uh, unfortunately for him, though, he had to do dope movements in order to do that, was able to cause any wounds. Then I did Kazgan Drax here, use his point to point teleporter to move directly into close combat range. He opened up with his heavy melee weapon, and his combat specialist ability was enough to put this guy down. I rolled four 12s on that one. I was able to destroy this guy right off the bat. So I'm pretty good so far. I killed three of the starving mutants right off the bat. I got another one I gotta deal with. It's got two wounds already put or left on him. And now all I gotta do now is wait for the uh, refusion reactor. It has popped up and this is gonna be the big challenge for this one because I have to get uh, intelligence check five on this one. I have to get eight plus on that before this thing blows up at the end of turn four. And if I don't do that, that thing's gonna blow up and kill my crew if I'm not careful. And that pretty much makes up turn number one on this one. So with that being said, we go directly to turn number two. All right, so that takes directly to the end of turn number two. So for this one, I basically had to activate Dead Eye Lun. So that was my medical officer. I activated him first, had him open fire with his energy weapon directly into the starving mutant. So because that energy missile weapon managed to kill that guy off, so that part was awesome. But looking back though, I shouldn't have done that. And the reason why is because for the rest of the activations, I was trying to get this test off. I only managed to get three tests on this one. So I got two more to go over the next two turns. And I got to get at least an A plus and that it's extremely difficult to do on D12. So as you can see here, my crew is basically scrambling right now, hoping that this fusion reactor doesn't blow up by the beginning of turn number four. So with that being said, that pretty much makes up turn number two. So we go directly to the top of turn number three. All right, so that takes directly to the top of turn number three. And as you can see in this photo, luckily for me though, I was able to finally shut down the reactor as well. Unfortunately, all four of my crew members over here basically failed their intelligence checks. Well, luckily for me though, Garrett Allenson actually managed to get two 12s on that one. So because that, he was able to put the last two uh, challenge tests on this one, managing to repair the reactor before it actually blew up and blew up all my characters at exactly the same time. So with the starting mutants dealt with, as well as the fabricator taken care of, that pretty much takes us directly to the end of the scenario. All right, so with that challenge completed, basically for the rewards on this one, all my guys basically got one additional experience point, so nobody leveled up yet. Jorgen Gunthundrick also earned an additional experience point, but he's one experience point from actually leveling up as well. At the same time, I was able to get a mini lab kit as well as a hyperscanner as my rewards for taking care of the repair bay. And with that being said, we now move on to my next challenge. According to the rules, I move on to challenge number four, which is going to take place in the fabrication bay of Space Station Zero. So that's going to do it for this one, you guys. As always, please feel free to like, comment, and or subscribe. You guys' input is invaluable to us as always. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the greatest hive news related to this channel. That's good for this week, guys. I'll catch you guys next one. Peace out and stay classy.